If your pool was a magical healing genie, and by genie, I mean grave full of vengeful rotten corpse demons that reneged on their deals. And by deals, I mean implicit nonverbal agreements to sacrifice your children in exchange for healing your terminal illness, enacted simply by swimming in the pool. What would you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made. What you should do is how to beat the bloated genie in Night Swim. We start out following a young girl. Her deep slumbers awoken by a toy boat ticking around in the pool because whoever built this house put no effort into soundproofing it. The toy boat is such an annoyance that the little girl simply must don her bunny slippers to deal with it at this late hour. Well, more so because it's her terminally ill brothers and she needs to save it, apparently. Save it, save the boat from the pool. I don't get it. She grabs the pool cleaner to fish it out. Only now, the boat is fully submerged at the bottom of the pool, having taken on too much water. Sweet, let's just leave it until the morning. It's no longer a nuisance, and it's not like your terminally ill brother's gonna be playing with it right now anyway. Besides, it's a boat. It's supposed to be in the pool. All right, all right, enough ripping on the little one. She is downright determined, scooting her bunny slippers to the edge of the pool. Boy, it's a slippery one. <laughs> And that's what you get for breaking curfew. Her mom's figure appears, lending a hand to help her out. When the girl surfaces, her mom vanishes, like she was a ghost. Then everyone's worst primal fear being in a pool by yourself at night happens. The lights go out. Safe to say, her ass should have dolphin jumped out the goddamn pool as soon as she surfaced. Absolutely no good is gonna come from doggy paddling in murky waters. When she finally goes for the side, little Tommy's boat pops back to the top. Hot fu- have I ever seen more obvious bait? Evil Jelly Bean Trail is about to strike again, and you know this girl cannot resist this jelly bean, even when it makes zero sense to go for it. B you got yanked into the pool by an invisible force. F the boat, get out of the pool now. Little Rebecca vanishes, sucked down into oblivion by the pool drain demon. A stern lesson to never enter a pool by yourself at night. And if the ghost of Randy Orton RKO's you into your backyard pool, you butterfly your ass to the shore without a second thought. Since that storyline hit a dead end, we're now following Ray, Eve, their daughter Izzy, and their son Gavin. Get this, they're looking for a new home, and boy does this real estate agent have a deal for them. Three bedrooms, a lovely community, one owner for the past couple decades, and a great school district, and priced to sell. It does need a little TLC to spiff it up though. Oh, and a little girl was murdered in the pool. Did I mention it's in a great school district? Yeah, the real estate agent fails to disclose this key fact because they have no legal obligation to, and it would make it sell for less. Look, I get that it's not a big deal if Grand Grand slipped away in her sleep at 92. It's a bit different when an eight-year-old girl mysteriously disappears down the drain. It's on Ray and Eve to dig up this info, which you should do, especially if you're getting a strangely good deal on a new home. Luckily, WikiHow has you covered. Upon discovering the happening, you could pinch pennies, buy the house, then fill the pool and put a swing set over it. But are you really willing to roll the dice on whether or not that did the trick? Are you prepared to open the blinds one morning and find your daughter swinging by your neck? Maybe just wait for the market to cool down a bit. Before they head out, Ray's eye catches something. Oh my God, they left her slipper in the pool? Ray, having taken one too many balls to the face during his days as a pitcher decides he must fish it out. Bro tries to crawl out onto the tarp to grab it instead of using his cane. Why am I even helping? Dude, it's old pool garbage. Leave it and go take your family to lunch. <laughs> It's not looking good. He's all caught up in the vines. He does make it out alive, unlike little Rebecca, probably because he GTFO'd immediately. Now, had he been tempted by the toy boat or a Babe Ruth autographed baseball, safe to say it would have been all over. Pool Drain Demon needs to work on its choices of bait. Eve takes Ray to see the doc again about his episodes. Seems his MS has progressed to secondary progressive MS. Symptoms include spasticity, stiffness, numbness, difficulty with walking and general 
control coordination, and apparently poor decision making. The doc prescribes him a regimen of aquatic therapy, aka swimming, hopefully supervised. With that in mind, it only makes sense to buy the house with the pool. After we get it thoroughly inspected, as you should do, of course, Ray and Eve opt to sign the dotted line without doing so, which is why Ray's the one to discover the drain clogged with rotten soup water that little Rebecca's corpse has been marinating in. You're probably gonna wanna get that cut looked at, the healthy dose of antibiotics. Now they hire the pool inspector. He tells them their pool is fed by deep groundwater. I guess that explains the sludge? Nothing a little chlorine shock can't fix. Time to jump in. Later that night, Eve goes for a night swim. The lights flicker out. Without me having to say a word, she gets her feet out of the pool as fast as possible. The pool light suddenly turns back on. Eve's rightfully spooked and immediately goes to check on her family. I'm glad she's not just brushing it off as an unlikely coincidence. I think she's about to kick off a house history murder mystery research montage. She wants to have a pool cover installed and get the lights checked out. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be in time to keep whiskers from falling in. The only remnant is the cat's collar, which the family finds in the morning. Ray fishes it out and then goes to re-bandage his wound. Only the severe laceration he sustained from digging through the drain a day ago is completely immaculately healed. I'd hesitate to speculate that it was magically healed in exchange for the cat's sacrifice. This doesn't seem like the give and take type of demon, though I suspect that in some quiet part of Ray's brain, he's thinking the same thing. Okay, so so, in exchange for a cat's life, cut on her hand is healed. What's a fair trade for MS? Does the neighbor kid count? And if so, how bad do you want to play baseball again, Ray? Don't you dare put that pool cover over me, or the deal's off. Fuck! Oh, you're gonna pay. The mental fuck escalates with Eve having a nightmare, waking up to another nightmare. Ray's lapping their pool at 3 a.m. You need to pinch yourself super hard or something. Whatever you do, do not go near that pool. And ultimately, she doesn't. So we never find out if that was the demon playing tricks or not. Based on the doctor's reports, I'm inclined to believe it was actually him, trying to get that sweet, sweet demon healing. She's never seen such a miraculous recovery. I'm a bit perplexed. Everyone that's gone for a night swim including the cat, has been vanished or close to it, except Ray. Dude's just splish splashing without a care. Is this a clever way for the demon to ensure that they don't move or fill up the pool? I mean, how could their family deprive Ray of his means to a full recovery? Is it too early for Eve to put the pieces together? Well, the case is thin, no doubt, but there's been a lot of strange happenings. Her nightmares, the missing cat, Ray's mysterious recovery, maybe. Maybe she just needs one more sign. And lucky for her, I think this demon's gonna give her one that she won't forget. Gavin asks his dad to throw some quarters into the pool that he can dive for. Ray promises to come over after he finishes benching. While submerged, a coin falls in. When Gavin pops to the surface, his dad isn't there. Hmm, must have been the wind. He puts on his goggles to continue. Another quarter plops in further toward the deep end. And another even further. And another right on top of the pool drain. The proverbial evil jelly bean trail strikes yet again. Gavin should be old enough to, one, realize that a coin tossed into the pool by nobody is f strange, and two, having it happen four more times leading into the deep end, which your father told you not to swim in, is also strange. Bit of a red flag. Might be worth popping up to the surface again. If your dad still isn't there, then something weird is going on. I mean, could it be your sister throwing quarters in from the fence or something? Uh, tough. Each quarter that was plopped in was done in a very accurate, precise line. No way you could be that accurate throwing quarters from the fence. You should probably just get out. After snagging them all in one breath, he notices a figure at the edge of the pool. He surfaces, and like all the others, nobody is there. He thinks it's just his sister Izzy messing with him. So naturally, he swims back to the deep end. This kid is dumb. Talk about being led around by your nose. Hello, I need help. Lil bro, are you in a trance or something? Well, snap out of it. Do you honestly think a girl is trapped in the tiny pool gutter? I feel like I'm trying to hurt a sheep away from danger. Painful. Can you guess what he does next? <laughs> yeah, he sticks his hand inside. 
Wow, I am utterly disappointed that I'm gonna have to continue watching this kid sleepwalk through this nightmare. As for the demon, dude, that was a free layup. About as in the bag as it gets. How do you mess this up? I swear to God, if this ends with Gavin beating you up with a wiffle ball bat because he's not afraid of you anymore, like that Pennywise punk, I'm gonna jump in and drown you myself. Gavin runs inside to tell his mom what happened. Then she discusses it with Ray. At no point does anybody open up about their own strange waking nightmares and weird occurrences by or in the pool. It's Izzy's turn. With her parents out on a date, she invites over a boy from the swim team, Ronan, for a game of Marco Polo. She has no idea what's coming. Marco? At this point, she still doesn't realize it's not Ronan. She thinks he's just messing with her, prompting her to dive into the world's deepest backyard pool ever in search of him, falling right into the bloated corpse monster's ambush. It's all over for Izzy, until she kind of like kicks her leg a little hard, sending Drain Bro back into the abyss. Good God, man, in the bag. What are you even doing? So little Rebecca Summers and the cat have simply no chance, but you let Eve, Gavin, and Izzy go? Literally. And even straight up a heel raise MS. I think you've gone soft. Time to hang up the towel and kick up your feet on a pool chair. When Izzy surfaces, panicking, Ronan tells her she was only down there swimming around for like a few seconds. Well, that's disconcerting. Whatever's going on, it can severely warp our perceptions of reality. He tries to calm her down, saying maybe her foot just got got stuck in the pool cleaner. She agrees, but only so he doesn't think she's crazy. Good move. Don't want to add to our problems by needlessly making people think we've lost it. Start with telling your own family first. See if they've had any spooky run-ins. Gavin seems to be acting pretty strange recently. Gavin's actually the one that confronts Izzy about it. She tells him that their mom and dad are finally doing great and to shut his mouth because nobody will believe them anyway, which is weird because if they've both seen things, well, maybe their mom and dad have too. The silver lining here is that the lack of spookiness outside of the pool would suggest that simply staying out of the pool will keep you safe. Kind of a risky, selfish, temporary measure that relies on your whole family understanding the threat. There's also no guarantee it couldn't tiptoe up into your bedroom at night and slip under the covers with you. There's no guarantee that filling the pool will cease the threat, nor running away to a far land which doesn't share the same groundwater. But it is their best shot. With Gavin, Eve, and Izzy all ganging up on Ray, I think they could strong arm him, especially with building a case, doing a little research into the past residents of the home, their missing cat, a little camera work to see if we can capture anything, etc. Look, Ray, do you want to swing a bat or do you want your family alive? Those are your two choices, but fuck it. Go ahead and throw a pool party too. I'm sure the pool monster will enjoy watching from the drain hole. Gavin's on the camera situation while Eve pries the real estate agent, Kay, after she'd said a few too many scoops of rum cake. Eve tells Kay that when they fixed up the pool, the inspector told them it hadn't been used in 15 years, maybe longer, which is kind of weird. Kay finally spills the beans. A little girl had drowned in the pool. At the same moment, Ray's possessed. <laughs> Against his will, he drags his chicken fighting partner under the water. Ray, Ray, Ray. Should have known that gifts always come with strings attached. Well, that's one way to break up a party. Nobody wants anything to do with their family anymore. Eve gets everyone in the car to drive to a hotel for the night to get away from the pool. Only, it's too late. You can take Ray out of the pool, but you can't take the pool out of Ray. He starts choking, his veins coursing with drain juice. Eve gets him stable in bed and calls the doc to get him in next week. For now, she has to listen to his possessed ramblings about how it's so cool in the deep end. He says he just needs to go back in one more time. Clearly, he's lost it. He's unstable and not to be trusted. Eve needs to put a stone in her back pocket to clobber him if he starts acting up. While he rests, Eve goes back and drains the pool into the sewer. Gonna guess and say she just released this demon into the wild? But I thought this pool was fed by groundwater. Isn't it already able to move around about anywhere? Considering groundwater's everywhere. I think, given the severity of the threat, they need to relocate to a different state. Preferably somewhere that, again, doesn't share the same groundwater or river access. They could simply Google Maps of Aquifers to check. I'd also ensure that no 
major rivers from our current location enter our new location. Hard to do with rivers intersecting most major aquifers. I'm assuming this thing doesn't travel by rain because it disperses its soul too much or something. Like a T-1000 reforming from its melted liquid droplets. Bit risky of an assumption if this demon is hunting them like the grudge. Really, Hawaii's gonna be your safest bet here. Besides going to a rainy rural area and surviving off of captured rainwater for showers and bottled water for drinking. Eva finally gets to googling. She checks the missing and unsolved mysteries database link to the Minnesota missing persons database. Turns out, Rebecca Summers wasn't the only one. A lot more people lived at their same house and went missing mysteriously. She calls Kay to find out where the Summers family is now, so she can exhume the tragic memories of their child. The mom, Lucy Summers, is strangely welcoming. She tells Eve all about her husband and son, both of which aren't there. It's quiet in the house. Too quiet. She's also strangely fond of the pool. Sounds like Ray. So does her coughing. When Eve asks about Rebecca, Lucy insists she never had a daughter at all. More coughing. Lucy starts ranting about the history of the lake that once existed there. How it required sacrifices in order to keep on giving miracles. Lucy sacrificed her daughter so that little Tommy could heal from his terminal illness. To do what must be done. Well, not really. Lucy was possessed by the water when she did it, meaning nobody ever had a choice. Now, if you're Eve sitting in that chair listening to this insane story, knowing what you know about Ray's possession, you need to one, get the fuck out of there immediately, and two, remove your children from Ray's presence. It'll be over soon. Someone else will find the house. Okay, so Ray's screwed. Gavin and Izzy return home without their mom for some reason and the kid nearly drinks a glass full of the tainted water. Luckily, the water demon was stupid enough to create some Jurassic Park ripples in it to spook him off. The kid disappoints us yet again by splitting up from his family to go in search of their cat outside by the pool after hearing his collar bell jingle. You know, the collar that wasn't on the cat when it went missing. Idiot. It's honestly physically painful witnessing this kid blindly walk into another trap crawling out onto the rickety diving board that the demon had violently shaken above him during his previous encounter with it. Why would your cat even be on the floaty in the first place? An aversion to water is one of the most well-known characteristics of household cats. <laughs> pool cover begins rolling over the top of him. Luckily, Izzy and her mom rush outside to stop the cover. Eve has Izzy run inside to call for help while she dives in after Gavin, as if Izzy's phone isn't in her pocket, which she could use to dial 911 right there. Please don't tell me you're gonna ask your clearly possessed dad for help. Yep, that's what she does. This sneaky monster somehow knew her mom would order her back inside, thus planned out a broken water glass ahead of time. Izzy literally falls for it perfectly. When she whips out her phone that was in her pocket this whole time, Ray shows up just in time to bat it out of her hands. <laughs> See what I did there? Underwater, Gavin's nowhere. But there is a dark hole where the drain is supposed to be, like a gateway to the upside down. Eve ties off a hose, grabs her flashlight, takes a deep breath, and dives in. Oh, I thought she was going to use the hose to pull herself back out or keep herself from getting pulled in. Nope, she uses it for one last ditch breath of O2. Cool. But I'd think dragging the hose in and then stopping all of your momentum to snatch a breath would be counterproductive. You'd want to dive in as streamlined as possible, trying to carry as much speed as possible from gravity. She finds Gavin, grabs him, then attempts to ascend. Only problem is, there is a lot of demons that want both of them to join them in their watery grave. <laughs> After a three and a half minute long breath hold, swimming voraciously while panicking and dragging the dead weight of her son, she finally makes it to the surface. Immensely lucky. Any of those pool demons could have easily grabbed and pulled her under. It's not over yet though. Rays come to ensure that the water gets to have Gavin for eternity. There's just one thing the groundwater didn't plan for. A teenage girl with the bat. God damn. It's literally gonna end with a kid beating it up with a wiffle ball bat. Ray's life flashes before. 
before him. His love conquers the demon's possession. He pukes it out. But the water requires a sacrifice. If not Gavin for his health, then his life for Gavin's. As the water begins to take hold of Gavin, Ray dives into the deep, dark end. Gavin immediately pukes, now free from the curse. Just saying, you could have tried the neighbor kid thing, or maybe tried to steal some animals, like a cow, like anything before just sacrificing your own dad. And this brings up another thing. If Rebecca Summers was successfully sacrificed in order to heal little Tommy, then why is Lucy still possessed? Eh, that sounds like a her problem. So ultimately, the family gained nothing. No miracle was really granted for their sacrifice. It was a complete net negative. If Ray declined the MS treatment in order to be with his family, that should have been fine because he never took from the water. Well, now they're gonna have a hard time selling the home with her dad being under the pool and all that. Maybe you could make a new deal? Like each of you loses a limb in exchange for your dad back? I don't know, I probably wouldn't. This demon clearly does not give a sh about fairness. They finally get around to filling the pool. The end. This family was given, frankly, an absurd number of opportunities to recognize what was going on in GTFO before Ray drank the swamp juice. For that reason, I think Night Swim was beaten. Moral of the story, never swim alone.